Welcome to the sixth in a series of online interviews with Richard Harvey, psychospiritual psychotherapist and spiritual teacher. My name is Rob Meager. I'm an interfaith minister. I lead a spiritual ministry initiative in Ottawa, Canada called Spiritual Guidance, and I've been a student of Richard Harvey's work since 2012. Today's interview will discuss the lecture Sacred Attention, Awakening, Liberation, and Spirituality in the World, Part 1 of 2, from the Shashti Korthi Lecture Seminars. This is the fifth lecture in that eight-part lecture series, and each subsequent interview in this interview series will explore in more detail each one of the lectures in the Shashti Korthi Lecture Seminars. Today's interview about the lecture Sacred Attention and all of the Shashti Porthi Lecture Seminar manuscripts are contained in an ebook entitled Dharma Sky, which is available through the Sacred Attention Therapy website at www.sacredattentiontherapy.com forward slash books. Dharma Sky is one of a trilogy of three ebooks, each containing 14 lectures totaling 42 lectures. The second ebook is entitled Moksha Dawn, and the third ebook is entitled Bodhi Ocean and is currently in production. Again, all ebooks are available through the Sacred Attention Therapy website at www.sacredattentiontherapy.com forward slash books. You can also listen to the full recording of each of the lectures in this series online through the Sacred Attention Therapy website at www.sacredattentiontherapy.com forward slash education. And now I'd like to provide you with some background about Richard Harvey. Richard is a psychospiritual psychotherapist, author, and spiritual teacher. His career spans 37 years working with individuals, couples, groups, and communities. He trained in humanistic and transpersonal psychologies and psychotherapy, studied meditation in India, and trained in Soto Zen. He has been influenced by Jung, Gurdjieff, Alan Watts, and Joseph Campbell. The ancient Taoists and the Vedas predominate Advaita Vedanta. He has a particular affinity with Ramakrishna, Vivekananda, and Ramana Maharshi, and was more recently inspired by Adidas Samraj and Nisargadatta. Deeper than all these varied experiences and teachings, however, is the early sense of truth Richard possessed since childhood, a deep understanding and intimacy with the noumena, the divine source of being. It is from this innate wisdom that his spiritual teaching has blossomed, grown, and developed. Richard is a prolific and passionate author. Two of his books were self-published efforts, The Book of Being in 1998 and Taoist Gift in 2005. The Flight of Consciousness was published by Ashgrove Publishing in 2002, and his latest book, Your Essential Self, The Inner Journey to Authenticity and Spiritual Enlightenment, was published by Llewellyn Worldwide Limited in 2013. Richard has published nearly 200 articles, and he is currently working on his forthcoming book entitled Your Sacred Calling. Richard's lifetime of study, work, and experience has culminated in his independent psychospiritual psychotherapy practice from his mountaintop spiritual center, Cortillo Lano de Montano. The center is set in a beautiful and tranquil three acres in the southern slopes of the Sierra Nevada mountains in Andalusia, Spain. And from his center, Richard offers individual therapy and couples counseling in person via Skype to people all over the world, psychospiritual training and supervision, courses, and retreats. Richard's work connects personality and spirituality through a middle stage of heart awakening, authenticity, and compassion in his comprehensive model of human development the three stages of awakening. He is the founder of Sacred Attention Therapy, a profound, radical, and fresh approach 
to the sacred spiritual life and to the dilemmas which have arisen from the accelerated development of ego processes in the 21st century. He believes that it is through the transformation of the individual in his unique struggle to become fully him or herself that we will progress through a collective gestation of soul and spirit into a timely light and expanded consciousness. It's now my pleasure to welcome to the call Richard Harvey. Welcome. It's good to be with you. Do you have your microphone on, Richard? No, I there do now. Go. There we go. <laughs> when I, 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 I saw your lips move, but there was no sound coming out, so I just wanted to check it. I'm Apologies. Glad. No worries. I, I'd like to begin today, and in that introduction, uh, it was mentioned that the influence of Ramana Maharshi um, on, your, on your life. And very near the beginning of this lecture, Sacred Attention, Awakening, Liberation, and Spirituality in the World, um, you speak of Ramana Maharshi. And in the lecture, you speak of him as a great saint, and that he transcended the fear of death when he was quite young, relatively speaking. You state in the lecture that it was um, at the age of 16. Um, you go on to say you realized the fact that he was going to die with shock and pronounced terror. And he decided that rather than put it off, he would deal with it then and there. So he dramatized his death. And, and you share um, uh, how he dramatized that and what his experience was. And then you close this portion of the lecture off by saying, Ramana had transcended the fear of death and with it fear itself. He was able from that time on to focus through sacred attention rather than worldly attention. Worldly attention separates and divides. It sees through the egoic mind of difference, different objects and events, and judges good or bad, attraction or aversion. Sacred attention, on the other hand, admits no differences and no separation. So my question is, did Ramana Maharshi's experience in transcending the fear of death and experiencing sacred attention, as you describe it in the lecture, directly or indirectly influence your sacred attention therapy? Gosh. Um, yeah, I mean, I think that uh, Ramana and, you know, other great uh, enlightened people informed my therapy because um, when I came to psychotherapy, which was humanistic psychotherapy in the mid-70s in Britain, um, it was for me a spiritual pursuit. It was for many people a spiritual pursuit. And um, I was one of those who was predominantly spiritually inclined as opposed to psychologically inclined because that was my uh, sense of life, that was my sense of center. I didn't see a lot of um, other than futility really mm -hmm. um, in the worldly pursuits unless they had a, some spiritual basis. So when you come across a, a great um, spiritual being like Ramana Maharshi, which for me was less reading of the words and more just an intuition, even from the pictures. It was just a feeling of, yeah, oh yeah, I know you. you There's sort of a feeling. And uh, not only I know you, but you show me something that's possible. I think it's not similar the a Christian a Christian's relationship to Jesus, for example, if they are looking at Jesus from a Gnostic point of view, mm -hmm. as opposed to a establishment religious point of view. You look at Jesus and say, Jesus has provided me with uh, an idea, a notion, a model, a map, a, a way, mm -hmm. and that way is what is a human being? and what is a human being capable of in the, the depths of him or herself. And Ramana was um, one of those, there's not many. Mm -hmm. And it's curious how, not many for me, I mean, I mean there is many, 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 but um, 
it's curious, isn't it, how we're drawn towards people. You talk to other people and they're drawn to Mao Baba or Sri Aurobindo or, you know, I, one reads these um, people and looks at the pictures and you just don't have that feeling of kinship. At, le at least I don't, but with Ramana I do, mm -hmm. with Ramakrishna I do, with Vivekananda to some degree I do, and, and so on and so on. And I would read Gurdjieff and I just feel, oh yeah. Mm. You know, you know, um, it's hard to feel kinship with him because he's such a, a preponderance in his um, appearance. But um, mm. there's something of kinship for me with Gurdjieff and a little with Alan Watts and his human flawed spirituality. You know, <laughs> yeah, uh, Alan Watts and Gurdjieff are interesting um, souls. They're interesting characters. Um, Aren't they? Indeed, I I first came across Gurdjieff. Um, through someone else um, about five or six years ago. Um, I had not heard of the gentleman and his teachings. Um, this person had been studying him for about a decade at that point, um, and I trust continues to, but interesting personalities, uh, in particular Alan Watts, who I've, I've followed a little bit myself. Um, right at the very was there something else you wanted to add before I go on? <laughs> The thought came to me that um, if we have to be to some degree hierarchical about this, I think Gurdjieff is a master. I think um, Watts was a teacher. I mean, Watts was a great intellectual, a great philosopher, a great exponent of deep truths. Um, but I think in his life and his thinking, in the end, you, you or, or I anyway, were put forth the idea he was a great teacher. Um, Gurdjieff, on the other hand, I consider a great master. It's a distinction. Yeah. Um, Ramana is, I mean, more or less universally yeah. considered a great, great saint. Mm -hmm. And so, in a kind of hierarchy of spiritual attainment, of course, all these guys um, inform us in our work because it's my fundamental conviction that when we're counselling or in psychotherapy with someone, that we approach them in their wholeness, and that necessarily means here is, in whatever embryonic stage of development um, a spiritual uh, being mm -hmm, mm -hmm. whether you know it or not you know mm -hmm. whether that person knows it or not one, one of the things I, re I rejoice in and you've, you've touched on it in the comments here is um, that for you Ramana Maharshi speaks to you um, and to others it, it may not and as an interfaith minister I always embrace and I'm drawn towards the, those teachings that suggest um, more than ever at this time, we need that multifaceted curriculum. And what it's speaking to is we need those different ways um, of allowing people to connect to the divine because where Ramana Maharshi may speak to you, it may not to someone else. Um, you know, it, it may be Gurdjieff or it may be, um, um, you know, Osho or it may be, you know, you could name them, you know, um, but what speaks to one person may not speak to another and it's it's all good because um it's it's there for um our relationship with whatever speaks to us i want to um i want to pick up on a an interesting element that was right at the end of this opening about ramana maharshi and then i want to move on in the lecture you sure that years later after this experience that ramana maharshi had um, of transcending the fear of death. Years later in his temple at Ramana declared that the greatest good you could offer humanity was to retire to the forest and realize your true self. And a questioner asked of Ramana Maharshi, but what about helping other people? To which the Maharshi replied, what other people? <laughs> um, and, and I, it's, it's a very interest for me. It's a very interesting exchange between that questioner, questioner, and Ramana Maharshi because there's many spiritual teachings that speak of the of the lesson of the goal is to be of the, or is to be in the world but not of it, um, and it speaks a little bit to many spiritual teachings um, advocate or encourage even the most spiritually enlightened, as Jesus did, to get out with the people 
and 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 work your healing, work your uh, teaching um, among the people. Th this comment by Ramana Maharshi, his his reply of well, what other people may seem like it's flying in the face of that. Um, isn't is is that what Ramana Maharshi meant? You know, really. Um, um, you know, just retire to the for forest and realize your true self. And if it means sitting in the cave for the rest of your life, that's that's just that's great. That's that's good. Um, or is there something else going on here? I believe that um, if we look at the Gospels and we study the Gospels of Christ, then you see that the healing ministry, in fact, occupied a particular time and was not the ultimate. Even historically, it wasn't the the later uh, ministry of Christ, interestingly. So he went through a period of what uh, Zen Buddhists call Geda Zen, which is the performance of miracles, which is not the ultimate um, spiritual endeavor by any means. Mm -hmm. And I think mm -hmm. that uh, Hinduism, the philosophy of the Indus Valley, uh, Vedanta and uh, so on and so on, um, are extraordinary in their depths and uh, profundity of spiritual teaching to the degree that the esoteric uh, teachings of real spirituality are that there's no difference between you and I. Now you and I are not um, connected because we shake hands or put our arms around each other's shoulders. I mean even now you're in another country and I'm over here and yet we're connecting how? How are we connecting? And how are we connecting if we're not connected here and the people who may be listening to all of this who in the future, because they'll necessarily listen to it in the future, in fact you're listening to me now in the future because there's just a little bit of time here before it gets to you, everything is, um, there is no present in that sense, you're not witnessing a present moment. Um, but I think what Ramana is saying is indicating the profundity of esoteric spirituality and that is the truth is, there's no difference between you and I. Not just that we are, mm -hmm. you know, different in this, that, and the other way. There is no difference, absolutely no difference. And what it means is that one uh, person's uh, realization of the enlightened state has an effect on the whole of humanity. And I'm sure Christ knew that. I'm sure it wasn't a good thing to put into the Gospels in the, for the political, societal, and power-based uh, reasons that the certain things were left out of the Gospels. But luckily in Vedanta, we don't have quite such a pol political um, sensibility. And certainly in Ramana, we have a complete freedom where he would sit Are we on? We're back on. Just a second here. It appears that the recording is is picking right up from uh, where it left. Oh, good. Um, just let me check. Actually, Richard, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pause.